A very warm welcome to our carol service today. Wherever you are, it's great that we can come together to share in traditional carols and to hear the readings that tell of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, this is going to be very different from carol services in other years. The decision not to hold the service in church came about simply because we are not currently allowed to sing as a congregation together. However, we can sing along at home as much as we like. So I hope you will join in, however much you feel comfortable in doing, and as you do so, sense a spiritual connection one with another. I very much want to thank everyone who has helped out in putting this service together, our instrumentalists and singers, all those doing the readings, and especially all involved on the technical side of bringing it all together. It's been a real team effort involving a great deal of work, so thank you all very much. And I'm sure this service will be a real blessing to us all. I'm going to start the service now with one of the more formal introductions that have been given for carol services. And after that, the service will continue without interruption or announcement. So may God bless you through this service. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you. We have come together as Christmas draws near to prepare for our celebration of the birth of God's beloved Son. Through the days of Advent, we have followed the light of Christ and now we travel in spirit with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to acclaim with the multitude of the heavenly host the coming of the Prince of Peace. Through scripture and silence, prayer and song, let us hear again the wonderful story of our redemption, and hearing, let us rejoice and respond with lively faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that, as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may, with sure confidence, behold him when he shall come to be our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen.
Isaiah prophesies the birth of the king. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of our Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. gives a vision of peace for all. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, 
but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God.
But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over all Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
birth of Jesus is foretold. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. St. Luke narrates how the birth of Jesus took place. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, 
and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. Thanks be to God. Christmas prayer for the work of the Children's Society. Lord Jesus, King of Kings, yet born in a stable, vulnerable and helpless, as we prepare to celebrate your birth that very first Christmas, we pray for children and young people who feel scared, unloved and unable to cope. To those who feel afraid this Christmas, bring your light and hope. To those who feel unloved this Christmas, bring your peace and joy. To those who feel unable to cope this Christmas, bring your comfort and a listening ear. Thank you for the work of the Children's Society in listening to and supporting children and young people who have no one else to turn to. Bless all the staff and volunteers, because no child should feel alone, especially at Christmas. We make this prayer in your name, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen.
everlasting God, we share today with Mary and Elizabeth their love and joy as the waiting for Jesus' birth nears its end. Quieten our hearts and lives so that we can hear your voice amongst the hustle and bustle of everyday life as Christmas approaches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for all our choral services, concerts and social events that have been held during Advent, and we pray that all of those who have attended will have had a glimpse of the life of the Gospel. We pray for all our clergy leading Christmas worship and for our bishops, archdeacons and the staff of the diocese, giving thanks for the work they do in the diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our world leaders, for the royal family, for heads of state in Europe, the Commonwealth and for the United Nations. We remember before you all those who will spend Christmas period away from home, in conflict in Syria and in the Middle East, praying earnestly for an end to war and terrorism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we give you thanks for our community leaders and for the way they make our towns and villages so beautiful and bright with the coloured lights and decorations at this time of celebration. Thank you too for the shopkeepers for their seasonal produce and nativity displays. Help us also to hold in our hearts the less fortunate as we give thanks for the work of the Little Brothers and all charities who bring aid to the homeless and those in need at this particular time of year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we call to mind all those we know who are struggling with life. Christmas doesn't feel much like good news at the moment because, as a result of the pandemic, for many, income has fallen. Many have or will face redundancy, unemployment or benefits reduction. God help us to give gifts that cost love instead of money, not to fear the rising cost of Christmas or go into debt to pay for it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for the dedication of scientists and lab workers both here and around the world, who have worked tirelessly to produce COVID-19 vaccines in such a short time frame, one which is now being used in the UK. Thank you God for the dedication and care of medical staff who work regardless of the danger of COVID-19, many of whom will be at work even on Christmas Day. We know that our earthly bodies won't last forever, but we also know that you are the God of the impossible and are still working miracles today. Please bring healing by medicine or miracle. We bring before you those who have asked for our prayers and in a moment of silence, we bring that before you those known to us. We especially ask for your comfort and healing for all those who are coping with terminal illness and ask you to be close to those who care for them. We give you thanks for those who have been healed or are in the process of recovery and recuperation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember those who have departed this life and thank you for the good that they have worked in their lives. Comfort all those lives who are saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their loneliness and help them to know that Jesus 
born in Bethlehem, is the light of the world which no darkness can quench. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of God, your mysterious coming is beyond our understanding. That like your holy mother, Mary, and her cousin Elizabeth, we pray you come to us as you have promised. Help us to serve you in any way that we can, knowing that you are with us day by day through the joys of Christmas and into the uncertainty of the new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, Where was the Messiah to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will become a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi and secretly found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me. So I too may come and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that had been seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw the, child, the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their gifts and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus, the Christ child. We're here because we believe that Jesus is the Son of God and we try to live our lives according to his teaching. The Gospel according to St John launches straight into the ministry of John the Baptist and Jesus. It begins without the birth narratives of Matthew and Luke. 
St John immediately establishes Jesus as light and life and John the Baptist as a witness to that light and life. Apparently John did such a good job witnessing to Christ and baptising believers that the Jews sent priests and Levites and Pharisees from Jerusalem to ask John the question, who are you? John responds that he is not the Messiah and then responds to following questions as to whether he is Elijah or the prophet by answering that he is not. John then echoes the words of the prophet Isaiah saying, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Amidst destruction, injustice, hopelessness, the prophet's job is not easy, but it is his job to proclaim God's word, regardless of the readiness of others to receive it. John is to proclaim God's word and as it is confirmed in the history that precedes him and all the history that precedes us, this can at times be a lonely task. Well, we have been given the job description of what prophets should do amidst disasters in their days. But we rely on world leaders, the media, the newspapers, newscasters, to inform us what disasters are happening. So let us think back over the last two years what we might have proclaimed. In the year 2019, many countries, including our own, showed an increased concern about climate change as wildfires destroyed much of Brazil's Amazon rainforest. This brought about a change in thinking and a general concern for the world about us. Then we had an interest in space missions to the moon and Mars following the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. We then lived through the infamous political struggle over Brexit, resulting in the resignation of the British Prime Minister. Also the launch, the launch of the presidential election campaign in America. Then fire consumed the 850-year-old Gothic Cathedral Church of Notre Dame in Paris. Moving back to our scriptures, St John's Gospel states of Jesus, in him was life, and that life was the light. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Jesus' life reveals the fullest expression of God's love for the world. Jesus is the light in the darkness. He is hope amidst despair and his life gives life to others. Over and over again, God brings life where there is death, hope where there is despair and light where there is darkness. It is 
through Jesus Christ and the promises of God confirmed in him that provide the strength and courage to proclaim God's coming kingdom regardless of current circumstances. It is hope in Christ that provides the strength for the present regardless how bleak or desperate the situation may appear. So let's now consider happenings of this year which we vividly recall. As the year 2020 began, China announced to the world the exist existence of a new coronavirus. On the 31st of December 2019, a cluster of cases of pneumonia were reported in Wuhan, China. By the 1st of January this year, the World Health Organization set up an incident management team and began to mobilize. The images of 2020 that we call to mind from that moment on as the disease took hold and developed into a worldwide pandemic, perhaps show how much the world has changed. We have hospitals with exhausted members of the medical profession, wearing full PPE, working endlessly to save lives. Empty cities, a war veteran walking up and down his garden to raise, raise money for the NHS. Neighbours clapping on their doorstep together in spirits. Grandparents talking to their grandchildren and other members of their family through glass windows some questions we should perhaps ponder to ourselves and reflect on. How have we changed? How has our neighbourhood changed? What have we learned? Who do we hold dear? What will a new world in the aftermath of this disease look like? What can we imagine now that we couldn't imagine before? How do we see the future? We may not consider ourselves good Christians, but that is exactly what we try to be. And just as God has used imperfect people throughout the ages, he can use us. The task for us will be difficult at times. We also will find ourselves crying out in the wilderness to a world that does not understand and does not want to listen but through Christ we are called to reflect a new way of life which points to the light. This way of life is rooted in God, shaped by his vision and guided by his love. As we seek Christ's light in our lives May we also strive to be that light in someone else's life and in so doing, live lives that are luminous of God's love and presence 
in this world. When we live lives that testify to Christ's light, we live lives that are bigger than ourselves. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Gentle Christ child, refresh our thinking. Gentle Christ child, reignite our vision. Gentle Christ child, renew our humility. Holy Christ child, may we hold on to your tiny hand and feel the warmth of your love this Christmas time and always. Amen.
St John expounds the mystery of the Word made flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, 
the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.